what up, Tag Nation? It is I, the prestigious Scooter Ray, you know, current Tag Prediction. And it's an early one today, folks. WWE presented us with a PLE coming from Australia. You know what? I can give you that piece of well, that's tag shit. Free fall as I die through the kaleidoscope in my mind. No rope up to climb. Gotta remind myself that I'm fine. Mama, I don't really want to. What up, what up, what up? What the key? It's the prestigious. Prestigious. Just, uh, just all around, just glamorous champion of tag, Scooter Ray. And I'm here to talk about WWE's latest PLE, Elimination Chamber of Secrets, hailing from Perth, Australia. So, since it was in Australia, it came on 4 a.m. my time. 3 a.m. was the pre-show. And let's get into it. It was a show. It not only... Not only the fact that I know it was early, but it was a show. It was entertaining. I didn't find too many low periods or low moments in this uh, show. The chamber matches, we'll get all into that. I will say this before we really delve into the PLE. I'm kind of liking this idea WWE is throwing out because they've done it two shows in a row now. Royal Rumble, which does the two Rumble and those other two matches. The Elimination Chamber was the two Chamber, two other matches, and the Grayson Waller Effect segment. If their theme shows tend to be slim down and trim down like this I'm okay with it like for instance if Hell in a Cell is just two cell matches a couple of matches and that's it or Money in the Bank or the two Money in the Banks a couple of matches that's it I'm not necessarily mad at the theme shows being this format what, what say you uh, Sir Quaxton what say you even cracks in the glaze. But yeah, let's get into it. Oh, nope, sorry. Long match first. Oh no, I don't have the overlay. I have. What? Well, the first match of the night was on the pre show. And it was for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. You had the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kyrie Zane, versus Candice LeRae and Andy Hartwell. Of course, being from Australia, of course, being in Australia, Indy being from Australia, she got the hometown welcome. It was good to see. It was good to hear. They was going crazy for it. I didn't even know this was supposed to be a match. I think, and not to make it sound that way, but I think this match was kind of booked for the fact of we're going to Australia. Let's get our Australian superstars on the show. So, of course, if you ever hear a review from me, this never felt like a title change. It never did. Asuka, Kyrie retained. Of course, Indy got the cheers and the welcomes and everything. Not that it was a bad match. It just, once again, it never felt like the title is going to change because I want to say this match literally came about Friday. So we're here. And then of course to open the show, we had our women's elimination chamber match. We had Liv Morgan, Raquel, I'm about to call her by her, NXT name, Raquel Rodriguez, Naomi, Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, and Tiffany Stratton. I am telling y'all this right now. This 
arguably might be my match of the night or morning. Whatever you want to say it. Those six ladies, let me show you again. Those six ladies showed up and showed out. And coincidentally enough, the two ladies in the middle, Naomi and Becky, started the match. And it was a match. And also, I'm saying this, it's, it's, it's looking this way. Tiffany Stratton's gonna be a problem. She had the crowd on her side. They were they were chanting Tiffany. Like they were Tiffy time and everything. She performed some nice high level moves considering, you know, she wasn't, you know, how they normally say born and raised and bred in the rest of the district. Because I, I think she's only been doing it for a few years. And that was from when she started in NXT up until now. And she showed up and showed up. Arguably, arguably, if she's not the MVP of this chamber match, she's co-MVP. But those six ladies did the damn thing. They had good spots. They had good action. They had great moments. The only unfortunate thing I disliked about this match was the story going into it. If they wasn't already building up Becky versus Rhea, it would have came more of a <gasps> that Becky won, but since they was already kind of hinting at it, teasing it, and kind of throwing it out there for us, Becky, Becky ultimately won. Um, the final three was Becky, Bianca, and Liv. It was a sequence where Liv rolled up Bianca, and as soon as the three, Liv turned around, manhandle slam, bam, one, two, three. Big time Bex is the, is the uh, winner. And I want to say, did Liv Morgan have the most eliminations with two? Yeah, I think Liv Morgan had the most eliminations with two. But the ladies showed up and showed out. And remember, other than the pre-show, this is what opened up the show. This is what opened up the show. And those six ladies, kudos, bravo. Thank you for just going out there and just putting on a show. So, of course, as of now, WrestleMania is either going to be Becky versus uh, Rhea or Nia Jax for WrestleMania. I'll let y'all know who wins that when we get to the end. The next match for the WWE Undisputed Tag Team Championships of the Galaxy. You had Judgment Day's Senior Money in the Bank, Damian Priest, Finn Balor versus New Catch Republic, that is their tag team name, New Catch Republic, Tyler Bate, and Pete Dunne. People. 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 Considering those four men or NXT grown talent. I mean, of course, you know, they were all elsewhere before, but in WWE, they grew up in NXT. They put on an NXT style tag team title match. Like this title match was very reminiscent of one of them old school takeovers back when Papa H was uh, running the show in uh, NXT. They went out there. Now, if you ever hear me do these reviews, of course, I always tend to say it doesn't ever feel like a title could change. I never felt that way going into this match, but this match had moments to where it was like, I could be wrong here. New Catch Republic might end up taking these belts off of Finn and Reese, but it was a duel. 
they had false finishes, they had great spots. And to really show that Dominic Mysterio is really like the heel of WWE, he accompanied Priest and Balor. And when Mike Rome was about to introduce them, he snatched the phone, phone, he snatched the mic from Mike Rome and he tried to do their introduction and the crowd was legitimately drowning him out. He had to just say it because you could barely hear him on the on the mic. This wasn't no piped audio or anything. This was legit. No matter where Dominic or Dominic goes, that man is getting booed. But the finish of this match was just once, like I said, just watching this was almost straight out of, a, I said, an old school takeover. But the finish was Dunn and Bait had Priest on the top rope and Finn was holding Priest's leg because they was going for a top rope, kind of like the finish Priest off. And then Priest was able to recover. And right when he recovered, Finn tagged himself. Priest proceeded to hit a double south from heaven choke slam on both gentlemen because Bate was the legal man, if I remember correctly. Bate was the legal man. And as soon as Bate hit the mat, bow, Finn with the coup de gras. One, two, three, the champions retained. And if it wasn't Finn stomping bait, then it was Finn stomping uh, done. It was one, I want to say it was bait. But yes, bravo. This was, considering I really didn't have much eh, going into this, I apologize. I simply apologize because those gentlemen, once again, like I said with the ladies, showed up and showed out. Back-to-back -back bangers. Like, back-to-back -back bangers of matches. Like, the Women's Elimination Chamber match and did you get this Tag Team Championship match? It was like, whew, put it this way, it was so whew. They had to, they had to kind of calm the crowd down just a little bit. You know, it was so much action, they had to kind of break up the action. And this is why we get the Grayson Waller, we get a special Grayson Waller effect because once again, Australia, home country, Grayson Waller effect featured, well, yeah, featuring world heavyweight champ Seth Rollins and the 2024 Men's Royal Rumble winner, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. Austin Theory talks up Grayson Waller. Grayson Waller comes out, crowd going down. He hits the golden shoey with two Tui. Oh my gosh, I can I just literally forgot how to say his name. Tui UFC fighter. Oh my gosh. But they share the double go golden shoey. The crowd is loving him. Once again, you know, country mate. You know, they, they they even said on commentary that this was the first time in seven years. I think they said they've been to Australia, so they was going crazy. And then eventually Grayson calls out Seth. They go crazy for Seth. Call out Cody. They go crazy for Cody. Now, this was definitely one of those segments where if it wasn't for the fact of Grayson Waller being Australian, this shouldn't have had been on a PLE. It this could have been on a Raw. This could have been on a SmackDown. Like it, it, it wasn't nothing that that. Oh, okay, well, I'm gonna tell you. Of course, it was something, but it it wasn't like this. This had to happen at a PLE. You can solely tell this was solely because of Waller being an Australian. 
and him getting that pop, him getting that love and adulation. Let's just put it out there. But in a sense, really and truly, the segment culminates with Cody saying, hey, I'm fighting Roman at WrestleMania, but until then, I'm free. And hey, The Rock, I'm challenging you to a match. That's essentially what this segment was for Cody Rhodes to challenge Rock to a match at some point before WrestleMania. Will it happen? We don't know. But that's essentially what this Grayson Waller effect was. Cody challenging The Rock. Then we pick back up with the action again because now we get the men's Elimination Chamber match. And of course, the men's Elimination Chamber match is to see who's going to challenge Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. So we get KO Kevin Owens, the almighty Bobby Lashley, the Viper, Randy Orton, the Scottish Terminator, Drew McIntyre, the U.S. champ, Logan Paul, and unfortunately, he's cut out for reasons, but you get the megastar, L.A. Knight. Yeah, this was a match, too. I definitely think the women's was better than the men's, but it wasn't like a like the men's was just trash. This was a match, too. And of course, you know, the men, it was hard hidden. They had spots. And I even love how little beefs that was happening within. Because, of course, you know, KO and Logan Paul still beefing. Randy Orton and LA Knight, you know, they kind of had their little thing. Drew McIntyre with the chip on his shoulder. And them men was out there slugging it out. They had, they had moments. Uh, and definitely... Some WrestleMania matches are potentially WrestleMania matches built from this. And I say that because LA Knight was taken out by AJ Styles. When Bobby Lashley got eliminated, LA Knight snuck in, I'm sorry, AJ Styles stuck in with a chair and proceeded to just thrash LA Knight. Thrashed him so much, then hit the Styles Clash, and Drew looked at him and was like, I'm gonna go ahead and get this pin right quick, big dog. And boom, LA Night gone, and it was like, hmm, maybe we could be setting up LA Night and AJ for WrestleMania. And then the final three, surprisingly, Logan Paul, Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre. Now, I also will say this. I am hoping Randy Orton was just selling the lower back injury and that his back wasn't is not injured for real because there was moments he was legit kind of holding his lower back and was slow to get up and kind of wincing a lot. So it's like he fought through it because whatever happened happened pretty early and it still had plenty of match. So I'm hoping. I'm really, really hoping that Randy Orton just was milking it and selling it because it would suck if Orton is, you know, still a little, you know, he 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 kind of tweaked something in his back or re-injured something because that would suck to come back and get derailed right around the corner from WrestleMania. And hell, just the fact that you was able to come back, period. But the final sequence of everything, which you got to love it. Logan Paul was taking out the brass nuts and he took forever in two days to put on the nuts. And as soon as he put them on, blah, RKO. One, two, three, Logan Paul is out. Orton eventually hits the RKO on Drew McIntyre. And right when... Drew, sorry, right when Oregon can pin Drew, Logan Paul, who never left, with the brass knucks on, turns Orton around, bow, Dex him. Dex him. Old school William Regal, power of the punch. Dex him. 
Drew McIntyre looks. Kind of like with AJ Styles. Let me go ahead and get this pin from your big dog. <laughs> One, two, three. Drew McIntyre gets the dub. He eliminated Bobby Lashley, LA Knight, and Randy Orton. And officially, WrestleMania, Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins, WrestleMania. Let's go. And now we get to the main event. And when you want to talk about a hero's welcome, we get a hero's welcome for the WWE Women's World Championship. We get the Eradicator, Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax. Of course, Nia comes out first. She's wait. And Rhea, you could tell she had to stay in character. Because you could tell she was really over... You could, you could kind of see it that she was overcome with the emotion that, you know, she's not only back at home in her home country, she's coming back as the champ. She's in the main event and the whole stadium is going dumb for her. They're going dumb. And it was it, it was a thing to see. Once again, like I mentioned with the tag team match, there was no way on God's green. Nia was going to take that belt off of Rhea, but it was a match. Because once again, all four of these matches were pretty good. People can say what they want to say about Nia and her being unsafe and all this and all that. She's gotten better. A lot better. She has vastly improved. And her and Rhea went out there and did it. For a main event match, they did it. It wasn't one of them, oh, this was a main event type. Of, no, it was deserving. Of course, yes, we're going to say it was the main event because she's at home. But once again, worth it. This was a match. Those ladies put out, put, a, put on a show. Jeez. Just the ladies of the night. Just, just all the ladies this night killed it. This was the ladies PLE and they did not disappoint. Like they really did not disappoint. But ultimately Rhea does hit the riptide on Nia Jack. One, two, three. Rhea retains. So of course, like I mentioned er earlier, big time Bex versus Rhea Ripley, WrestleMania. And the show ends with Rhea celebrating. She goes over to her family. They're all celebrating. And once again, the crowd's going crazy. And ultimately, this was a great PLE. Whether whether you had to wake up early to watch it, whether you're going to catch it later in the day or whenever, it's worth watching. Yeah, I told what happened in the matches, but just to even see how we got there, it's worth watching. Thank y'all for tuning in. Whether you loved it or hate it, don't forget to rate it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, preferably thumbs up. And let us know what you thought about Elimination Chamber. Whether you loved it or hate it, let us know. Let us know what was your favorite match, favorite moments, all that type of thing. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. And when you subscribe, you gotta tag that notification bell so you know when we post new videos like this one. And the background sounds you hear are provided by at Stoner J Simpson 7 on Instagram. Shout outs to the Brody for providing these beats that you're gonna be hearing on all of this. And don't worry, this 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 same review will be repurposed. You will see it on the Less Healthy Ninjas, which you know my other affiliation that I'm with. Shout out to Cosmic Boss that run your miss. And shout out to my tag brethren. Shout out to Jaeger Bombastic, who has punched his own ticket to WrestleMania because he won the tag rumble. So he gets the one-on-one -on -one shot at the champ. 
Shout out to Lip Dizzle. Shout out to Juggernaut097, who is currently in the lead right now in our championship series because next week is going to culminate to see who will be champ, who will be defending against one Jaeger Bombastic, who's so fantastic. Thank y'all again for tuning in. Take care of yourselves. Love yourselves. Take care of your mental and physical. And take care of each other. Be nice to one another. And until then, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, from your predictions champion, don't forget to tag out. Mm. Peace.